work on the assumption that Jonah not only had the experience with God recorded in the book with his name on it, but work on the assumption that he actually wrote it. When you do that, you get a larger and richer view of the prophet. Would we be inclined to tell a story like that about ourselves? Some we know would. They're not only willing to speak of their successes, they're willing to admit their limitations. This is a lovely thing. If Jonah kept the record, it was a record against himself. He admits to running away from the job that he knew God gave him. He admits to the sailors that he was the cause of their troubles during the storm. And he closes the book with a word from God that exposes the prophet's own embittered heart, his own embittered and bigoted heart. He has God saying to him, It would appear you care more for a plant that comes and goes in a night than for fellow humans and all of their flocks and herds. It appears you care more for your comfort than for their relationship with me and their very existence. I don't think we should be given to holy blabbing about our failures, much less blabbing about the failures of others. Wisdom and balance is needed in this area as in so many others. I know that, and I don't know always how to find the balance, certainly not across the board. Our finding peace with ourselves isn't the only reason the world exists. So we need to be careful that in our confessions we aren't making life difficult for others while we ease our conscience. There is a refusal to own up to wrong that is cowardly through and through. There's an unwillingness to own up that rises out of a terrifying sense of shame. Those who can't see the difference between this and that They need to stay out of the judging business. I think the more important issue in all this is the attitude of the wrongdoer. You meet some people and can't help thinking that they're too wise, that they have too many answers. Oh, they admit in some vague, generalized way that they're capable of doing wrong. But it's never actually been known. I don't suppose they need to send out bulletins every so often. Bulletins that chronicle their sinful and other blunders. But I think we expect them to carry themselves as if they really knew they were fellow sinners. I know a man who accused another man of a great wrong, held it against him for years. In a discussion, he revealed that he had held it for years, and the suspected transgressor assured him in the sight of God that there wasn't a particle of truth in it. For a fraction of a second... The accuser had panic in his eyes. But only for a second. He recovered his composure and said, Well, if it isn't true at the conscious level, it's true at the unconscious level. And proceeded 
to justify his years of false accusing. Rather than admit he had been wrong all along, he compounded his crime by setting himself up as judge in a realm where only God is entitled to judge. This man was no Jonah. Yes, I think it matters a great deal that we confess our wrongs. I do. I think it matters a great deal that we wisely and humbly confess our wrongs. But I think it might matter even more that we believe that we are capable of wrongs. Mm 